Okay. Welcome everyone. Oh. I am Jonathan Brent, Executive Director of the Evo Institute for Jewish Research. Today, we are here to unveil a new discovery made by uh, Evo in collaboration with the Martinus Majvidis National Library of Lithuania. Though I am speaking from this podium, this discovery and this project is the work of many hands, of many generations, of many lands. It is a collective, cooperative effort that has produced international respect, mutual trust, and we are very grateful for our Lithuanian colleagues who are with us today. Hidden in the basement of St. George Church in Vilnius, Lithuania for nearly 70 years, a trove of lost Jewish materials thought to have been destroyed during the Holocaust has been found by Ivo, working with our Lithuanian partners. This discovery of 170,000 pages of handwritten manuscripts, letters, memoirs, and other artifacts contains never before published literary works from some of the most famous, famous Yiddish writers, many new materials on Yiddish theater, as well as numerous religious and communal texts going back to the 18th century. These materials provide a watershed moment for understanding the dimensions of Jewish history in Eastern Europe and Russia and marks an important new chapter in the dramatic story of Nazi looting during the Holocaust when the Germans were seeking to destroy not just the Jewish people, but an entire civilization. Perhaps the most stunning chapter of the Edward Blank Yivo Vilna Collections project begun in, in 2015 to digitize and catalog Yivo's entire pre-war collection in New York City, as well as the discoveries made in Lithuania in the late 1980s and early 1990s. This project reflects the level of cooperation and mutual trust that is developed through this international collaboration. The implications of this discovery for the study and appreciation of Jewish history, as you will hear shortly from scholars David Fishman and Jack Jacobs, are enormous. But they are equally profound for the entire world Jewish community. Because these fragile pages, saved for so long, hidden in a basement, communicate the strength the nuance, the complexity, the vibrancy, and the tremendous sweep and grandeur of a thousand years of Jewish life in Eastern Europe and Russia before the Holocaust. Our goal is to make these documents permanently available to scholars, researchers, and the general public around the world. And we intend to initiate a campaign to raise additional funds for this project that will enable us in conjunction with our Lithuanian partners to process, restore, digitize, exhibit, translate, publish, and develop educational projects and programs out of this great wealth of new material. This is all labor-intensive work, but when finished, all this vast treasure of documents and books will be available worldwide at the touch of a finger. When finished, YIVO and our Lithuanian partners will have digitized approximately 1.2 million pages of documents and some 12,000 books. These books and documents come from all over the Jewish world, including Europe, Russia, England, and the Americas, and are in numerous languages, Yiddish, Hebrew, Russian, Polish, German, French, English, and Lithuanian. Evo's long-term goal is to create, in partnership with other organizations around the world, an online museum arranged in galleries of translated materials selected and arranged by scholars on particular themes and subjects, such as religious life, Yiddish theater, literature, music, folklore, social and political activity, and the material culture of daily life. Toward this end, YIVO will convene an international workshop for scholars, translators, librarians, archivists, funders, educators, and heads of Jewish organizations 
to meet in Vilnius in the spring of 2018 to discuss how best to approach the questions of research, exhibition, education, and public dissemination. Out of this workshop, we will establish an international steering committee under the direction of YIVO and the Lithuanian National Library. Preliminary discussions are now underway with the Lithuanian government and institutions to develop a venue for exhibition and research that would be under joint YIVO-Lithuanian administration. I wish to acknowledge now the YIVO board, in particular YIVO's chairman, Ruth Levine, Vice Chairman Irene Pletka, and Edward Blank, without whom I would not be standing here and this would not be happening. In addition, profound thanks go to the representatives of the Lithuanian Foreign Ministry in attendance today, both in person and virtually, and to the Israeli Consul General for his strong support. Thanks go to the Center for Jewish History and its archival and technical staff that has been so helpful for so long to this project. I wish to acknowledge with great heartfelt thanks the YIVO staff and the Edward Blank YIVO Vilna Collections project team consisting of Lyudmila Sholokhova, Roberta Newman, and Sarah Panikterra. I wish to thank YIVO's partners, the Martinus Majvidis National Library of Lithuania, the Central State Archives, of the Republic of Lithuania and the Wroblewski Library of the Lithuanian Academy of Sciences, their directors and staff. Senator Charles Schumer and Congressman Gerald Nadler have provided deeply moving statements of support. And lastly, I wish to remember the paper brigade of heroic Jews who saved these materials from the Nazis and Antonis Ulpis, the Lithuanian librarian who risked his life to save them from the Soviets. And now I wish to turn the podium over to David Fishman, professor of Jewish history at the Jewish Theological Seminary. Professor Fishman is the author of recently published Book Smugglers, which I see in his hand, uh, and has spent a great deal of time both in New York and in Vilnius exploring and studying the YIVO Vilna collections. David. Thank you, Jonathan. The materials, the materials discovered in Lithuania, both previously and now, constitute, in my opinion, the single most important documentary find for the study of Jewish history and culture since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in the late 1940s and 1950s. It is a large amount of material. It's not 1,000 pages or, or 10,000 pages, but an estimated 170,000 pages. And they are not random papers or the collections of a single individual or institution. Most of the materials come from three central Jewish repositories from before the war, Ivo, the Strashun Library, and the Ansky Museum. These three institutions collected Jewish material from all across Europe. And thus the trove that we now discovered includes a Hebrew astronomy manuscript from Alsace, northeastern France, written in 1751, which is on display here. And a very large collection of survivor testimonies from the wave of pogroms in Ukraine in 1919. The materials are generally speaking in good physical condition. A lot of dust and dirt has accumulated on them because they were hidden underground in bunkers in the ghetto during the war and then hidden under mountains of books in the book chamber of the Lithuanian SSR under Stalin. As I worked going through the materials, I washed my hands on an hourly basis. The new trove is even richer and more diverse than the one discovered in Lithuania at the end of the Soviet era. Here are just some highlights. There's a large volume of rabbinic religious manuscripts. On display here, as an example, is a handwritten notebook of sermons delivered by the head of the Tel's Yeshiva, one of the foremost rabbinic academies in Eastern Europe, between 1916 and 1918. 
There are also manuscripts by Rabbi Isaac Elchanan Specter, a very renowned 19th century authority. A booklet of sermons by the Rebbe of Liadi, which is an offshoot of the Chabad Lubavitch Hasidic movement. And much, much more that is not yet identified. There is a huge amount of Yiddish theatrical and literary material. The most sensational find is two notebooks of poetry by Abraham Sutzkever, the greatest Yiddish poet of the 20th century. Poems written in the Vilna Ghetto in 1942 and 1943, for which he later became famous. One of the poems in Sutzkever's own handwriting is completely new, that is previously unknown. It is entitled To My Brother, and it is a poetic last will and testament to his brother Moshe, who lived then in Tel Aviv. Other finds in this field of literature and theater include letters by the great Yiddish classic Sholem Aleichem, the author of Tevye the Dairyman, and songs by the father of modern Yiddish theater, Abraham Goldfaden. All of these three items that I've mentioned are on display here. Third, there are numerous documents related to the social and communal history of Jews in Eastern Europe. There are record books of religious and philanthropic associations. The oldest of them is from the town of Ladze and goes back to 1836. The most touching such document is the 1857 contract between the Jewish Water Carriers Association of Vilna and the Ramailis Yeshiva Academy, Talmudic Academy of Vilna. The water car uh, carriers received a room for religious worship in the yeshiva, rent free, in exchange for donating a Torah scroll and a set of the Talmud. And there are hundreds of photographs of famous individuals, institutions, synagogues, cemeteries, theater performances, and family photos of all kinds. While I said the materials are in good condition, they are symbolically all stained with blood. First, they are the remnants of a civilization that was brutally exterminated by the Nazis. This is what we have left from the murdered Jews of Eastern Europe, their manuscripts, their documents, and photos. <coughs> More specifically, these documents are stained with blood because they were rescued from destruction by a group of ghetto inmates who worked as slave laborers for the Germans. <clears throat> as I lay out in detail in my book, The Book Smugglers, these inmates were charged with sorting all of Vilna's Jewish treasures into two categories, 70% for destruction and 30% for shipment to Nazi Germany for study by anti-Semitic Nazi scholars. The inmates risked their lives to hide these materials, mostly by wrapping items around their torsos and smuggling them past German guards. If they were caught, they faced death by firing squad. And indeed, most of the men and women who rescued these materials eventually perished at the hands of the Nazis, including Ivo's own deputy director, Zalek Kalmanovich. So for many of us, these materials are not only cultural treasures, and they are not only relics of East European Jewry. They are testimonies to heroism and to martyrdom, and in that sense, they are holy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Jack Jacobs, our next speaker, is professor of political science at CUNY Graduate Center, is the author of many books, the most recent of which is The Frankfurt School, Jewish Lives and Antisemitism, and like Professor Fishman, has spent many years researching the Vilna collections in both New York and Vilnius. Jack. Thank you, Jonathan. The materials recently located in Vilnius and which are currently being examined and cataloged by individuals working closely with Ivo will, I have no doubt, be of great interest to all those concerned with the lives, history, culture, and ideas of East European Jewry in the generations preceding the Second World War. 
virtually every serious academic focused on Jewish life or thought in Eastern Europe and publishing over the course of the last 60 years has made use of and benefited greatly from Ivo's collections. But all of these scholars were perfectly well aware that the archives preserved by Ivo and located in New York were merely a portion of what once had been a far larger collection. Like David Fishman and others, I've had the privilege of being able to travel to Lithuania, sometimes for extended periods, precisely in order to work with unpublished documents which are currently in Vilnius. I have often thought of the unique documents I examined in Vilnius as if they were pearls. Pearls which had at one point been part of a breathtaking necklace, but of a necklace which no longer existed. For the chain which had made possible the existence of this necklace had been brutally cut. And in my mind's eye, some, indeed most, of the individual pearls which had constituted this wonderful piece had apparently rolled away, often as not, into dark, dark corners. From my perspective, each and every one of the items recently located in Lithuania is a valuable, irreplaceable pearl. And yet I was taken aback when I first saw the cover of the recently found autobiography written in Vilna by a fifth grader, Bebe Epstein. Her picture is on the poster off to my side, and that's the cover of the autobiography. Why was I taken aback? Well, you see, my mother was born and raised in Vilna, went to the same school as had Bebe, and she knew all of Bebe's family when she and Bebe were girls. And I personally remember very vividly Bebe's uncle, Lazar, who worked for the Jewish Labor Committee and who brought Bebe to the United States after the war, and Bebe's cousin, Yisroel, who was a Maoist and who I met in Beijing. For me, Bebe's autobiography is not merely of antiquarian interest. It evokes a real person and a milieu about which we should know more. And I anticipate that other documents recently found in Vilnius will have comparable meaning for others in the communities served by Ivo. Because it was and it remains a core part of Ivo's mission to document the lives and culture of otherwise unknown Jews, of rank and filers, as well as of great writers and teachers and rabbis and others. So allow me, if you would, to end with this. The materials just rediscovered in Vilnius will supplement, complement, and enrich the existing holdings of Ivo in immeasurable ways, and will help Ivo to partially reconstruct the necklace which once was and is no more. We can't and we won't complete that task, but we will not forego contributing to that effort. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think both of our two uh, scholarly speakers have emphasized a point I want to reiterate, which is that this is not just an antiquarian project. This is a living history of a living people with a living memory. And, and this is one of the most important aspects of this project. Um, we are profoundly grateful for the support of the Lithuanian government in our joint project, and we are most grateful for the good wishes of the Lithuanian Foreign Minister, uh, uh, Linus Linkevichis, uh, which we will now have the good fortune to see on Skype or video or however it's magically Magic. produced. Oh, magically. <laughs> centuries and we have back 
the spirit of uh, common uh, life, uh, common history, common heritage. Because what was found reminds us the time of Jewish genius, Rima Gaon, who is part also of history of Lithuania. I congratulate all the Hebrew Institute. I also am very happy that those who made possible, who saved this heritage, uh, courageous librarian Oma Shimaike, and especially uh, director of Chamber's books, uh, Anna Skulpis, uh, they saved this uh, heritage. Uh, we know righteous among the world who are saving the lives of Jewish people, and we really pay respect to them. But these people who made possible uh, for us to own this heritage of uh, uh, Jewish history, which is important not only for, for, for Israel, for Jewish people, for Europe, for the world, also for Lithuania, for all of us. I congratulate all this historic event, bringing the spirit of the past back, bringing not in Jerusalem, Vilna, back to the map as well. Uh, I'm really very happy. I now wish to welcome the Honorable Rolandis Christunas, Ambassador of Lithuania to the United States. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, I'm really very much honored and humbled to be among you today and uh, to share this joy of discovery. And uh, after listening to the scholars, I understand that uh, anything I would say, how important it is, you know, seems so little. I cannot put it in better words than they have put it. And uh, Yes, looking not just at simple pages of documents, but understanding that uh, the people were risking their lives because they perceived those pages to be so important to pass those on to us. And also, I'm very pleased and honored that Lithuanians were involved in safekeeping these documents all those years to make those documents to see the light. Because seeing for those documents the light, it also brings the memories we should cherish. The past we should embrace, and, uh, and with the EVO help of EVO Institute, we are doing this. And um, I would like to stress how much we value our relationship with EVO Institute, because literally, EVO Institute, the Lithuanian, Majvidas Library, archives, not just connecting pages, as I said. It's, those are not simple pages. They are actually connecting history they are building this bigger picture of uh, like adding mosaic after mosaic, a piece of uh, new piece to get the big picture of uh, what rich Jewish culture Lithuania had. And uh, needless to say that uh, embracing the past, learning from it, we also should look to, to the future. And with Zivo, uh, Lithuania has a lot to look to in the future. I think it's still difficult to grasp all the potential those documents are giving us uh, to learn from. And uh, learning for Lithuania of this rich past of the Jewish culture we once had, it's very important and I cannot overstress this. And, uh, and I do remember then when, almost one year ago when I was at Iwo Institute and it's my second year of uh, ambassadorship in Washington DC here, I was presented with a picture of my hometown, Panevejis. And I was so surprised to learn that 80% of uh, Panevejis inhabitants before World War II were Jewish descent. And, uh, and I'm a mature person, even for some I might look young, you know, but at 46, learning something about your hometown? So it's, there's something wrong, you know, that uh, during the Soviet times we could not do this. Uh, there is not a trace in my city I could connect with the Jewish uh, community which was present there. And that also stressed the importance of what we are experiencing now because the potential for Lithuania to embrace its past, it's, it's immense. And the, we could go to the projects at schools, we could uh, help people in the cities to learn the real past of the city and so on. So it's, uh, let's build this future projects together and looking for the next year there will be two, 100 years of Lithuania's restoration of independence 
I'm looking forward for the new, to the new projects with EWA Institute. And thanks to everyone involved. And as I said, my deepest respect to the people who perished in trying to preserve what we are able to look today. So our looking at those documents, as I said, it really memorizes their wonderful actions because it was meaningful for them and it is very meaningful for us. Thank you. We are extremely grateful for the support of the Consulate of Israel. And now I wish to invite Consul General, the Honorable Danny Dayan, to the podium. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that uh, Judaism is first and foremost about knowing and remembering. Uh, the state of Israel, my, my country, the Jewish state, wouldn't have been established uh, if we weren't so adamant to know and remember our ancient history. In Judaism, most festivities about, are about remembering, not only festivities, only also days of uh, fasting and mourning. Every single year, we, Jews all over the world, for 2,000 years, sat on the floor in a certain day remembering Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem. In every single day, in every single place, every year, we sit and celebrate the, in the Passover Seder, the exodus from Egypt thousands of years ago. In that respect, Knowing our history is not uh, something miscellaneous to being Jew, to being a Jew, is a central thing. Without knowing our history, there is no real Judaism. And in that respect, I think that uh, archives that document our history, especially an history that was brutally terminated physically by the Nazis, is uh, archives are not only places of learning, repositories of knowledge. As was already said here, for us are a kind of sanctuaries, places in which uh, our common past, our parts also of our tragic history are not only learned, but uh, made, making it possible for the continuity of the Jewish people, making possible the continuity of the Jewish people, the very existence of the Jewish people. Um, I just discovered, uh, Professor, that uh, maybe even it has a personal aspect for me. Um, uh, my family didn't come from Lithuania, but my family, definitely my paternal family, is one of those uh, escaped and saved from the 1919 pogroms in the Ukraine. Uh, they escaped for the relative safety of Poland and then to the much more safer South America, Latin America, and finally to the ultimate safe place for Jews, the state of Israel. Um, I think that uh, for the state of Israel, for the Jewish people, this uh, discovery of this repository of uh, invaluable documents in Yiddish and in other languages, in Hebrew, in other languages, is a day uh, of mixed feelings. It's a day of celebration because uh, it means that uh, we will be able to know more about the fate of our brethren in Eastern Europe. And it's also a day of uh, mourning, of remembering and mourning our people that was so brutally exterminated, a flourishing culture that was also 
could have built so many treasures for the Jewish people and for the humanity, for mankind. And it was brutally cut by the Nazi horrors. As a representative of the State of Israel, I want to thank everyone in Vilnius and in New York and elsewhere that made uh, this uh, rebirth of these documents, uh, this revival of these documents possible, and the research uh, institutions of Israel, the National Library, the research universities in Israel, and rather the research bodies on Israel, want to be partners in bringing uh, alive uh, what these uh, documents represent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, somewhat unexpectedly, we discovered that the son of Antanas Ulpis uh, lives in, of all places, New Jersey. And uh, we are very, very fortunate to have with us uh, Dinius Ulpis um, as we honor the work of his father. And uh, he will share his thoughts with us now. Thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here today. Um, it's really a, a privilege also to speak on behalf of my dear father. And um, I think if he, if he lived today, he would be immensely, immensely touched by this. He was a very modest, almost humble person. And um, the attention that he's getting today would, would probably be too much for him. Um, but I'm sure that, you know, saving these Yibo treasures was something that uh, he fully realized what that is. He absolutely was sure uh, that one day, new spawn of researchers and readers, that's most important, that readers would turn to these things. And thanks to Yibo Institute efforts, these will be digitized eventually. I think that is something that he hoped, he, he couldn't be sure, and he didn't live long enough to see that. But uh, that moment has come. Of course, these things, they, they needed to be brought to the, to the light of day. That was most important. They spent too much, too much time in the darkness. You know, uh, many ask me, how this, how this happened? Why did he did so? And what was he, the moving force behind this? Well, to this I can only say that my father was an ultimate self-motivator. He possessed a remarkable self-driving force a kind of uh, intuition that uh, took him through his life and his endeavors. Uh, at the same time, he was an outgoing person, uh, quite a confident one, and uh, very open and trusting towards others. Um, sometimes in the family we would say too much trusting to, to others. I would say he, he was, in that respect, he was true altruist and uh, humanitarian. He contributed a lot, I would say, to Lithuanian publishing before the war. He had a, like an entire, entire life before the war even. Um, uh, to the bibliography, to archiving, to Lithuanica, Polonica, Lettonica, Judaica, as we know today. In his own very special way, he also left uh, a mark in Lithuanian sports. Quite unusual thing, right, for a librarian. And um, Lithuanian theater as well and this, the social transformation that took, took place in, 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 in those towns where he, uh, where he lived and he, he happened to be a mayor for a short time. But uh, above anything else, he took exceptional care of his family and uh, we are so grateful for that. Of course, in my father's world, uh, books, manuscripts, any printed artifacts had a very special place. It was uh, a passion of his life and it was the light of his life, too. Now, speaking of light, I remember the Latin motto that adorned the walls of the book chamber uh, once my father was in charge. It said, semper at lucem, always towards the light. 
I think today, from a perspective of time, one can say that Santana Sulpis has always been this bright, intelligent, truly caring light that attracted his colleagues, his family, and those who happen to know him. And I think this is the way that we can describe this, this extraordinary fate of the documents and books that my father helped to preserve. A long journey towards the light of day. Thank you. Um, this concludes our press conference. Thank you for coming. Uh, I and the YIVO staff, our trustees, are available for interviews, and you are welcome to inspect the 10 documents brought here from Vilnius. Please feel free to discuss with the YIVO project team and YIVO archivists. Thank you very, very much.